Hi, Dr. Peterson. Long time no see. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Um, so I was at first going to ask about your thoughts on the very popular TV show, Rick and Morty. Uh, you know, someone just recommended that to me, and they said they thought I would find it funny, and that makes me nervous because I like The Simpsons, and I like the Trailer Park Boys. For, I actually like the Trailer... I really like the Trailer Park Boys. And so someone said... I know, it's so sad, you know, but... They said that I would like Rick and Morty, so I'm kind of afraid to even watch it. <laughs> it does have a nihilistic theme to it, uh -huh. I would say, so that, which is quite telling of, of the young population, which they, they, they fall in love with it, everyone's talking about it. So, uh -huh. Okay, well, I'll definitely watch it, because I've been looking for something to watch when I'm brain dead at night. So. <laughs> um, but I decided to tell her my question um, from a different angle, uh, if, I, if I may. Um, and it's about um, the case that uh, governments, let's say, such as Russia um, and Iran, they, or even in more extreme cases like ISIS, um, they do not want to conform to the nihilistic aspects of the West. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result, they've taken an anti-Western approach. Um, as someone with a Middle Eastern background, um, I've been trying to figure out where the origins of um, this hostility, more precisely, comes from and why things are the way they are. Um, I recently found out uh, that certain uh, key Iranian philosophers and political activists who were partially intellectually responsible uh, for the 1979 Iranian Revolution um, were highly influenced by the anti-Western Heideggerian philosophy. Hmm. Um, and this is partially why they believe that an Islamic state uh, would uh, it be, ne be a necessary counterposition uh, to, the, to the nihilistic uh, Western thought. Uh, you, I know that you're also familiar with um, uh, Alexander Dugin, uh, Putin's advisor. Yes, except Dugin doesn't really seem to have a coherent answer. He, he, he says that an answer like that is necessary, and that hypothetically it's something that Russia might be able to offer, but the details seem to me somewhat obscure. I mean, the Russians, maybe the Russians are doing what Solzhenitsyn suggested and returning to Orthodox Christianity, although Russia is corrupt enough so that it's very difficult to tell from the outside if that's mere collusion between a corrupt church and a corrupt state or if there's something genuine going on there. Now, you know, the, the, I would say there's a question under your question, which is tyranny or nihilism? Well, that's a good question, man. That's a good question. Well, lots of people would pick tyranny over nihilism. And so, if that's the only choice that people are offered, then... And I also think that tyranny is stronger than nihilism. Because what are you going to do? Organize nihilists? Hardly. <laughs> well, look at, look at what happened to... What was that thing in Central Park? You know, against the 1%. Jesus, I mean, what a dismal affair that was. We'd like things to be different. How? <laughs> well, we don't know. It's like... So, you know, you, you can just run over that. If you're tyrannical and organized, you can just run over that like there's nothing there at all. And that, I think there is a danger. And, and I do think that we're enticing the Islamo-fascists, let's say, by our nihilistic weakness. And I think more than that, I think that we're doing something more than that. Because one of the things that I've been curious about, and I'm going way out on a limb here, is I've been really interested in the alliance between the neo-Marxist nihilists, especially, or the neo-Marxist postmodernists, especially the feminists and the Islamo-fascists. I just don't get that. It's like there's something very, very interesting going on there. And I think part of it is that when you, when you drift too far into the nihilistic substructure, there's a huge call for tyrannical order that manifests itself unconsciously. And so that's the dynamic that I see playing out in that peculiar relationship between the modern neo-Marxist feminists and the Islamo-fascists. Do you think Heidegger has a role <clears throat> in don't, I don't know. That's a very, that's very interesting. That, that's a very interesting idea that you brought to mind. I had no idea that there was a relationship between Heidegger and what happened in Iran in the 1970s. If you could send me a citation about that or something to read, I'd be very interested in doing that. So, okay. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat>